the told, perfect game. <laughs> I just right like <laughs> and well, he had three CS garbage. They are they are definitely going to have to be sp uh, uh, role specific for a perfect game. Yeah. Okay. I was just saying KP and death, but there's probably more to it than that. <laughs> All right, that's fair. I'll give you that one. We I think it's an interesting discussion. There's something I want to think about uh, for a future broadcast, but. We'll have to see how everyone shapes up in this game. Team Dignitas, realizing that Shen is a cool champion, is going to ban that one away. We've seen him show yeah. up this week. Really, like, it was weird because this is the second week of 5.11. Uh, next week will be on 5.12, I assume. But we didn't see Shen much in week one, but in week two of 5.11, we're seeing a lot of them. And it's just interesting to see that was kind of the adaptation period required. Yeah, some people starting to showcase the strengths once again of Shen and having that global teleport from the top. All these incremental buffs that he's gotten. Mm -hmm. over the past few months have uh, basically passed the threshold to play yeah. into uh, yeah. competitive. Now, speaking of champions doing that, you're noticing this uh, this Jarvan ban here from enemy esports. Their very first ban saying, Gamsu, don't you even dare. And of course, their first ban was Gragas, which allows them to go right away, hone in, and take down Rek'Sai for themselves. And Helios, in his four games on Team Dignitas, this, or sorry, his five games now on Dignitas, this is his fourth Rek'Sai game. Yeah, another X side for him. Very happy to get that. We've been over so many times the strengths of that champion. Mm -hmm. The thing is, all these top lane bans with the Jarvan and the Rise and the Shen, Hecarim is still up, and Hecarim is Flare's favorite champion, plus the other champion that Gamsu absolutely destroyed with last week. So I feel like that will be first or second round pickup here at yeah. least. Hecarim, Aurelia, and Rumble seem to be the three big champions for Flares. I wonder which one he's going to rush for or if he thinks they're equivalent enough to pick something else instead. Every single AD carry is available, as is every single support that isn't Alistair, but they decide that Rumble's the way they want to go, and Annie for body drop with everything but Alistair up. Yeah, I mean, that's a strong combo already. Team fight, very early yeah. team fight power there. When, I mean, anytime you have an AoE stun with Rumble ultimate, You've got uh, mid-game team fight mm -hmm. power. So uh, enemy esports shall be looking for some dragon control. Let's see what Dignitas decide to answer with. Because one of the biggest improvements in this team that we've seen recently, and keep talking about how clear they've been in their champion select with what they want to do with their team comp. You know, yep. comboing the Twisted Fate with the Hecarim early home guard for their play against specifically Team Impulse yeah. were a team that liked to overextend and take fights really, really deep into enemy territory. Double teleport like that is the perfect thing to capitalize against them. Meanwhile, Team Dignitas see a big team fight, hard engage team, and Dignitas say, you know, we can play a 5v5 team fight team as well. The Azir picked up blind pick mid, happy to grab that one himself, and they click, you know, we don't need not all set, let's grab the Sivir right away. This does leave up the Callista counter pick, but it seems like they're getting happy to play that same 5v5 style so far. Yeah, and actually in North America, we haven't seen the Callista counter pick work out as, you know, as this devastating counter matchup yeah, you're either. Right. A lot of the lanes have, you know, the Sivir team through either jungle pressure or through manipulation of lane swaps, or even just straight up strong Sivir's play with a strong support to combo with her, mm -hmm. have been able to handle those lanes thus far. All right, well, enemy esports could have the famed Callista any combo even still. If we think it is strong, they might go for it, but that yeah. puts everything on the table, so uh, just questions what their judgment is. Enemy esports, of course, with red side will have the chance to counter pick at the very end of it all, or flex pick something interesting. You never know. It could be any mid after all, and we are all duped, but... That's my default mid. You're taking the time. Because it's easy. Interesting. Enemy Esports saying that, you know, last I talked to them, they said they, in they implemented a rule that said, uh, you are not allowed to talk in the last, I think this was these guys, uh, not allowed to talk in the last 20 seconds of the champ select, and the coach picks, and huh. you, you, you do what they tell you to do. But uh, that didn't seem to be the case here. Otter was talking. They decided to go for the Jinx Annie. So uh, more explosive team fight engaged, right? Jinx now is clean up more, engaged with the Sejuani ulti to back up from the Annie, and it's just, 5v5, super large amounts of damage. Yeah, just doubling down on what they already had here for enemies, so no surprise there. The one thing is that they do not have that early game jungle pressure uh, by locking in that Sejuani to go for more AoE for them, to try and AoE them and get somebody low for Jinx to reset off. Yeah. So Rek'Sai, uh, Helios, he is set up for an advantage in the early game to see what he can do with it to try and get some sort of solo lane advantage. Maybe yeah. focus on that rumble and try to keep that rumble from getting to the double spell penetration breakpoint for him. All right, well, Jinx 
played into a team that was happy to play Hecarim and Nautilus. So backline reach abound for Dignitas. Good luck being Jinx against his composition, but that's going to be the case here. Dignitas, Hecarim, and Nautilus, the two grabs. And enemy esports now to take their last pick, their mid laner. Even though they saw the Azir early on, they are waiting to show us what Inox is going to play. I actually do really like Kiwi Kid on Nautilus here uh, mm. because he can do everything he needs to do in one second. If he gets off a hook in an ultimate, if this, if he can ultimate Jinx, that's all he needs to do, and then just try and absorb as many big AOE abilities as he can with his body, sort of fall on the grenade for the yeah. rest of the team. If he can get off uh, the tank, the glacial prison essentially. Take the death card and then sacrifice himself. That will be job well done, Kiwi Kid. All right. Well, Inox here to play what he did against uh, the Cloud9 victory. And he's back on Jace here in the mid lane. Jace versus Azir. Don't see him played a whole lot. Looks like Inox is the only Jace win we have so far in the North American LCS. We've seen some European teams succeed on it, but here's the comp. So a little bit of poke, but also a lot of AoE damage follow up. Enemy Esports have gotten one slight deviation, but still kind of playing into the same comp. Dignitas also, as you are talking about, Kiwi Kid in the front line, start a fight, Azir for follow-up. Yeah, and so far really balanced uh, damage spreads for both teams here. So we won't really have any single super tank uh, for either team. They will have to spread out their resistance choices, mm -hmm. depending on, you know, who gets fed in the game. All right, we'll see who does end up getting fed. Last eight seconds of champion select. I assume Kiwi Kid will change it, but right now he's still on Smite Teleport. Um, I don't know if that's <laughs> on right. purpose or not. We'll keep track of it. Kiwi Kid Summoner is at the end of Champ Select. No, okay, they're flashing Knight. Sorry, but like it stayed there. So I don't know what, what that deal is, but whatever. I like how you set it up, even though nobody can see it but you. And then I could call you a liar, and everybody would just think you're just a troll. They would believe. Well, would but they I believe would. you, or they believe me? Who knows? Either way, before we head on to the rift, send us your votes. Tweet hashtag dig winner hashtag enemy win to at lol esports. We will check in on the results shortly. If you want, also tell me where you whether you believe me or Kobe. And we are here for our next game of the day, game five, if I'm understanding properly. Think of the Thousands enemy esports. We are on to the rift once again. For the last game of the day. Let's see how well they can close it out. Dignitas are uh, riding high still. They had such a great start to this split. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they can keep things going. And keep in mind, with the earlier win of Team Liquid over CLG, Dignitas can True. tie first place with a win right here. At the exact halfway point of the split, Dignitas will be the number one team, or tie for number one team in North America. Considering they were one game away from dropping out of the LCS at the end of spring, this is such an amazing turnaround for these guys. Enemy Esports right now, same number of wins as Cloud9, only one game behind Impulse. A win makes them tied for sixth. Yep. Again, at the halfway point, they'd be nearly in playoff position. Nice ward kill by a Shifter. And he goes, ha, look what I can do. <laughs> look, no hands, two soldiers. Impressive. Well, defensive ward line comes out. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised there's uh, no lane swap just to sort of nullify the Rek'Sai versus Sejuani, but we've seen many a Rek'Sai come up empty-handed going for early, early ganks. Oh, there actually, there it is. They're going for the lane swap. Ha-ha! There they are. They find it. They want Trashy to have an easier path, less pressure, uh, be comfortable just trying to farm up to level six and take away some of Helios' power. Team Toss, though, I don't see, there's no deep wards. I'm not seeing any indication for either of these teams having the reason. So this is pretty much all mind games, unless I missed a ward. Just mind games calling the, the lane swap up top. All right, so two on two top lane, normal things going on here. Yeah, there's no real deep vision. Gamsu yeah, Helios fully sharing experience here, so still both level one. As that pans out over time, easy early ricochet harass are going to push enemy esports in towards their turret a little bit here. And good that they're doing it because until Kiwi gets hits level two or so, he can't exactly fight back against Annie. So minions being the uh, buffer this duo lane needed. As the lane resets, we'll see how it goes from here. One CS was missed by Jinx, thanks to the push of Dignitas. Gamsy realizes it is a normal matchup down to the bot lane. So after helping clear two camps, he TPs in to go, in, go ahead and gain some golden XP. 
versus flares. Has the extra sustain advantage as well as a real ward, which is going to provide him with the ability to pressure that lane and push up. A lot of the times, Hecarim, you have to be very, very careful about spamming Q early uh, and get your rampage going because you don't want to shove the lane due to you know possibilities of jungler attention. But with a real ward and with the enemy jungler being Sejuani, yeah, Gamsu is really set up this game to pretty much do whatever he wants. Yeah, I think it's a, you're absolutely right. I think it's a pretty safe lane for him. We'll see if Gamsu, the MVP of last week, can continue that kind of performance. A nice hook on a body drop, forcing his flash away early. Taking toss early pressure, working out well. That's definitely a worthwhile flash there. Taking that away from Annie takes away a lot of her lane presence because it's all based around kill pressure with Annie, especially with uh, something like a Nautilus in the lane. His so body drop's got to be very, very careful with his positioning now. They have to spend a lot more money on ward coverage because Rek'Sai is such a flexible ganker. Yeah. And, I mean, there's even a bunch of minions being lost here. You're going to get most of these under the turret, but a, actually probably, I'm going to say, six CS lead. Only like four or five waves in is actually a sizable advantage right now for the Dignitas duo. They are certainly having a very happy time in the laning phase. Even the mid lane going well, you're seeing Shifter up 7 CS Wow. over yeah. Inox. I mean, down the line, we're having a 300 gold lead just from the laning phase for Team Dignitas. Yeah, and so far this split, it really has been Inox been uh, quite a strong laner, and Shifter quite often has gotten behind in CS. But uh, Azir with the early... Uh, very small lead, mm -hmm. but he has it nonetheless. A lot of pings down up on top as well. Uh, pretty much just spamming on body drop because they know he still has, he has no flash. And Kiwi Kid is itching to make a play as usual. Prides himself on his playmaking ability from the roll. Yeah. And you're going to see how fearless Team Dignitas are. They are not respecting the possibility of Sejuani coming in, even though there are not any wards that would track a Sejuani gank. It's just fearlessness from Team Dignitas up there. Yeah, and you can also see the extra ward placement that we talked about. Wards in the side brush up top and down bottom. Trashy gonna come through the river though. Let's see if we can pull this one off. Level four for both of them. Uh, Flares just dings five. Gamsu again on Hecarim so he doesn't have flash. Um, also yeah, not level like six, he doesn't have his ultimate, but just able to walk away with the speed boost. Yeah, it means Flares can free just wave for a little bit, but does that really even matter? And does Rumble even freeze well? Looks like Gamsu not losing anything to speak of. He's a minute and a half from his teleport being back up, so he can reposition around the map very cleanly and easily. Helios running through the jungle after spotting Trashy. Puts a bunch of T-Ports down, takes a camp away, and Helios gets farther ahead. Yeah, and he's doubling down on this top lane priority as well, or basically top lane. It is the duo lane. Uh, with that pink ward. They've invested in the pink ward for this tribush as well, and Helios hovering on this side of the map. They really want to pressure this while the flash is still down for Annie. However, if they push it too hard and they get you know, too aggressive with this, all it takes is one misstep under a turret. Uh, body drop still has the possibility of landing an AoE stun even without level six. Yep. If you can get a good W uh, this early on, that plus tower damage would be... Terrible news for Team Ding Toss. Yeah. Also terrible news is missing that. Yeah. Really sad stuff here. So we're only a minute and a half away from Annie's flash being back up. Seven minutes, 50 seconds is roughly the timer on that being available. So in terms of abusing this dual oh, advantage. Oh, they see it coming. There's only a small window, but it Can might happen it right here. Bait? All right now, Trashy Coke with the pink ward away. They immediately run away. They pop Helios' Raptor buff, which doesn't matter because they're on a pink ward. But that ward stays safe and happy. and. Enemy realize just how screwed they just might be up here. Level five and change for Trashy Sejuani. Practically equal here for the Rek'Sai of Helios. Their farm is about the same. Their gank pressure has been nearly identical, to be completely honest, as no one's burned anything because of them specifically. Yeah, basically, uh, without the flash being punished there, Team Dignitas, no early lead to speak of, and enemy have worked their way through the dangerous period for body drop. Enox even caught back up during the mid lane recall period. Tier plus boots versus uh, half of Merlin Amicon. And, you know, Enox is right back in there with the uh, now small CS lead himself. Flare is still holding equal against Gamsu, and even the Jinx caught up here. So, 
Trashy essentially having an uneventful route to level six is exactly what they would want on the Sejuani here. The yeah. roaming from Kiwika getting punished a little bit as well as you're seeing Harass come through from Body Drop and Otter. Saber stuck under her turret, though she did buy a BF sword, so poor JJ with an item lead on this. Spell shield baited out. The Annie auto attack. She's got flashback up, and Annie has her stun available once again, unless Kiwi Kid gets here right now. They're bringing flares up to the top lane, though. Worked his way He's almost through sick. the ward that is deep by Krugs and into the lane, ready to roll with the equalizer at level six. gamsu has got to think something is up down there. All right, so they are going to have the recall. They won't be able to make a play, and the lane swap is just going to be a regular lane swap for enemy. Uh, back down to Dragon, so Flares wants to use his equalizer for the Dragon fight. They switch that teleport up top lane. He's going to try and shove this very quickly. We'll see if they can get this level 6 AoE comp online. Look for the combo. Body drop is 6. Trashy is 6. Flares is 6. Everything checks out. They're ready to get a... All right. AoE fight started. Well, a devilishly strong team fight then for Team Dignitas. Enemy Esports actually with one more six than the enemy team. So, uh, or then Dignitas, I should say, to be more specific and clear here. As Tibbers is now available, as Kiwi Kid does not have depth charge. Now, the attempted top lane gank by Flares did mean the bot lane was uncontested and two waves died to the turret. Uh, nothing really that similar happened up on this side as Gamsu is still able to grab this wave here. Interesting idea here from Helios. He's He's betting on a gank top lane. If this succeeds, then they take away the threat of the AoE Wombo Rumble Teleport in Dragon Fight. However, if they fail, then they pretty much see Dragon Control, and all the wards there can easily be cleared out. Even with the double teleport? Because it's, it's Rek'Sai and uh, TP Hecarim? Oh, that is true. Maybe it's just like completely safe. But Fair point. <laughs> I'm just out of curiosity. I mean, certainly if they have to limp in, it doesn't work for Team Dignitas. Rumble, Rumble is one of the best champions at taking 2v1s, but he's in a pretty bad spot. Just might use good flash, but the knockup still going to come through. Good equalizer. Gamsu, a lot of damage. Fears him back across. Flares still on the run. Flash is down. Tower dive by Gamsu, taking aggro, but Flares gets a lot of damage back, and Gamsu can't get away. away. Kill comes back through to Flares. Helios going to clear the wave. Still right. advantage Dignitas. I'll re-answer your question. <laughs> and I think it will be carte blanche for enemy to clear out all the wards. Oh, looks like they're going for the double stun. But they Kiwi did Kid gets slow. White catch Kiwi Kid with the uh, flame choppers. They spell shield by Core JJ. Kept him alive during the uh, through the anti tibbers Probably getting pushed around a fair bit of damage. They could probably stay for this. It's yeah, close. with Jinx, they can burn it down. Tibbers, is, tibbers, do tibbers is doing his job. Uh, Core JJ cuts him down. Ooh, slightly overstay. Otter takes a bit of damage, but they go back on towards Kiwi Kid. Body Drop now takes the ulti. Gamsu is in, goes for Otter. Summer heal. Nice buy of time from Trashy. He's got to be careful. Out of mana. Ulti already popped. Body Drop nowhere to go. Will oh. get picked up by Gamsu, but Flares is in the mix. Ulti comes through, but it whiffs. Rocket's going to miss. That means two kills for nothing for Dignitas. So because... Nick Smithy got so much flack for missing his Sejuani ultimates. I gotta call out Trashy. He had a field goal Sejuani ultimate there as well, whiffing through all members of Dignitas. And they turn it around. So Dig, even though the turret does drop, they're able to get Dragon after the extra kills turned around bottom. Teleport from Gamsu, pan off. Ah, very nice stuff then. Team Dignitas gonna look to knock down bottom lane outer turret. The dragon easily from Helios and Shifter, and they even gave time for Gamsu to just parade through the jungle and grab himself back to the top lane. So big lead now for the blue side of Team Dignitas. 1,700 gold and the first dragon. All right. Well, the top lane gank, uh, the repercussions of that didn't quite play out as we expected. Yeah. But uh, all right, so let's take another look at this here. They want to finish off the turret, and Dignitas use it as the bait, uh, the turret money bait. Let's see here. What is this? All right, the Sedge all already went through all all members, so. Yeah, he used right as the turret went down, like right as uh, Jinx got hit. Gamsu here coming in at that level eight, able to pick up the kill. Flash was used from 4JJ there. So an extra resource spent. But still, it's going to look good for all the fans of Team Dignitas here. If they can improve themselves to 7-2, and two, they tie Counter Logic Gaming and Team still amid in first place here. The things that you can use as bait. Um, Worms. League of Legends. 
I didn't think of Blade. I guess you can use Baron as a bait. Does that count as a worm? Yeah. But uh, always look to have, always look to use, you know, your what your opponent wants against them. I guess that's true in uh, all aspects of life. Once you figure out what someone wants, you have control over them. Kind of malicious. Yeah. But true. Yeah. And they were fair. able to use the turret against enemy. If they wanted it. Yeah. Low health. Let's see what uh, all the pings come to because there's definitely a lot of people up here and we're looking at four, five members, the entire team of enemy Ooh. up top while there's a teleport. No teleport on uh, Hecarim. Yeah, but the thing is, there's so many good wards by Team Dignitas, they saw Inox head over and they're like, yeah, there's people up here, if kill. You, it doesn't matter if you group up under this turret and they land an AoE stun. Well, they're gonna okay. land a single target stun. Kiwi Kid takes all of the cooldowns, as you mentioned, which means nothing left to do. Body Drop just barely survives a late equalizer, but maybe it's enough. Flares the chase down. Body Drop did eventually die, thanks to Sivir. One for one, support's dead, top of getting pressured. Shifter, I don't think Shifter made it all the way there. Just Dignitas, you mentioned the, the vision that they had and looking for, you know, the opportunity of a counter plan, turning it around and even absorbing AoE abilities on a single target there. There was no answer. Yeah. While they had while they did absorb the abilities, they didn't have any damage there. The solo laners, neither solo laner there, you're not gonna be able to win anything in the mid game without solo laner presence if all five members of enemy have shown up. So yeah. enemy get to take the turret after the kill. Yeah, the, the benefit that Dignitas got was they pushed in mid and bottom. In Ox went okay. to like, make sure Gamtu didn't kill bot lane turret, but like it was like seven minions died that weren't farmed versus that turret kill. In Ox fighting Kiwi Kid, not really scary. Stopped his back. Yeah. yeah. But we're Body drive, gotta be careful. He lost mid lane presence. Uh, Kiwi Kid, though, zoned away by Inox means no chase through to Annie. Gamsu a little afraid of killing the pink ward for good reason, but as Binley gets pushed in, he's now safe. Kiwi Kid fishes for an anchor, doesn't quite land it. All right, group up from Dignitas. They want to pressure on mid lane turret here and try and answer. Turret's getting pretty low. Good boomerang blade in the mid lane will go down. Nice siege by Team Dignitas. Mid lane turret revived by Shifter as well. They've even got control over the blue buff. A lot going at once in the way of Team Dignitas. Gams who gets the blue. Interestingly enough, and now these waves are pretty well controlled by the blue team. It's really only players getting a push in the top side. Huh. I feel like that was unnecessary gold given to enemy by raising that turret. Uh, because the, Just because they were splitting off for the blue buff, uh, and they weren't going to have anyone there to defend the turret. Uh, now you can argue that the only reason enemy sent all their players mid was because that turret was raised in the first place, and that turret earned them a blue buff, but I think they would have gotten it without. It's fair. Small price, though. Sure, 100 gold. Small price to pay for it. All right. Well, still stands with Team Dignitas up Four, sorry, 1,800, because uh, a zero turret not worth nearly as much as a real one, and life is still happy for these guys. Slowly but surely growing their lead. Gamsu, unfortunately, only 75% kill participation. And he's half his team's deaths. What a massive drop-off from last week. I don't even know what happened here, but... Now, nah, certainly, still looking good for the team looking at a first-place spot. Trashy will be taking the Scuttler right at the correct time for this Dragon. If Enemy really want to contest for number two, and they've got a lot of really attack damage focused champions. The Jason Jinx will especially like this. Yeah, I mean, basically, I'm looking at Shifter in the next fight because mm. he's at the point with Azir where he can output a lot of damage. Uh, his damage is spiking really high, but he has to be very careful because there are so many AoE abilities for him to avoid. He's extremely squishy, uh, hasn't been able to build the Needle Large Rod into any item yet, so he's all offense right now. All right, well, no zonias. getting caught could be risky. And of course, we've seen enemy esports. They've got hard engage. They're, they're really willing to hit those abilities immediately after seeing someone. We saw Team Liquid run a comp kind of like this, where if they were able to catch Bjergs and they killed him right away, if they missed it, they wouldn't get the fight they wanted. So we'll see which targets enemy esports can hit. On the backside, they've got some poke to wait for those engages. We'll see if they have the patience required. They also have a lot of deep wards to set up shots from Inox. So Inox has spotters in the jungle prepping around the dragon fight. Dignitas is trying to get that vision back, but uh, they still have some fairly deep wards, plus the scuttlecraft. So 
We'll see if uh, Inox's aim is true. They can poke someone down. Okay. Poor JJ. There's the valuable target right there. They got him. Now, that is a lifesteal target. Low lifesteal at this point, but he can try and grab some scraps of health back. Oh, that one hit, fit. though. They want to go in towards Anox. The flash tippers goes to the beginning. Body drop gets jumped on, but it buys time for Anox to kite away. The dive is still there. Body drop goes down. Trades kills two for one. Digging the toss in the advantage. Gamsu gets chunked down, but Shifter is still alive to deal a bunch. CoreJJ takes the rocket, gets away. It's a two for two with Team Dignitas picking up the second dragon as well. Dignitas spread out really well. Shifter stayed safe the entire time. And that damage from Azir, consistent. He was able to stay up, and they eventually pushed enemy off of the dragon. Even without a jungler, the zoning potential that he brings with those soldiers, enough to dissuade anyone from going in. Very nicely done. The back line stayed safe. The tanks did their job. So, they yeah, let's, let's take a look at the back here, because Hecram's coming around from the back. Nala sets it up, and there he is, right on to the back line. And they combo it so well. Helios got in there at the exact same time that Gansu arrived. So all of this pressure on the back line causes them to collapse, and Shifter, uh, nobody's there to try and harass him at all. So both main damage dealers up. Now the reason that Dig were able to gain the objective after the fairly close team fight, and that combo of the Annie Rumble Sejuani not finding high value. All right, so more well-played team fights by Team Dignitas then. Their lead sitting still around 2,000. Waves getting cleared back and forth. Slight push lead is towards the blue team. Dignitas can still control the ward game because of this one. As Gamsu is still a very scary split pusher. 3-2-2, two, and two. looks like he'll do just fine against players. And in fact, it's a 1,300 gold lead for Gamsu over the enemy esports top laner. Which makes you think the split push continues to go Dignitas hostile way. Yeah, I really like it from Team Dignitas. Uh, the squad from enemy is a very binary uh, composition. You know exactly what you're getting with this squad. See if they can use a uh, cross map play here to make it pay off. Finally take down this outer turret. Maybe next wave. They've got pretty much all reinforcements cut off, so that should be easy gold for Team Dignitas as they work on the vision around Baron as well. Just spawned up 17 seconds ago. Top lane adder goes down as well. Team Dignitas still doing a great job of controlling the map in general. Shot calling and slow methodical play has been the hallmark of these guys. Their lanes were fine and their rotations have been better. Continue to grow a lead here. Top lane tier two still. They have not Silver Ultimate. To. They have Silver Ultimate as well. So even though their warning system is not too deep, they always have that panic button to hit. All right, the 1-1-3 th the here from Dignitas, erecting the turret. They can keep up pressure with the Hecarim. Here goes Body Drop, though. They want Helios, but it's not exactly going to mean much against Rek'Sai. He has Merc Treads as well. Wasted Rumble ulti for, I guess, a Silver ult, but nothing really important game. That's definitely going to be a big tool that enemy will miss as well. Now they just have to scramble for wave clear. It's just uh, wave clear on all fronts here for enemy. You can already see they're sending Rumble down. No. No ultimate from him. Means that he's gonna, just gonna try and stop the horse before he finishes off. Sure, it's not. I don't think he can stop him if he wants to. Gamsu will have to ult away. He overstayed slightly, but I think that's worth it. Very much so. Hecker multi for another turret going down. Four to two in turret. Zigatos continuing to play the rotation game significantly better and growing that lead from good shot calling. The one one three pays off for them. The tune of a secondary turret. Nox gets the hit on the Azir, though. Azir yeah. turret. Hunter gold for the turret. Even got the cannon in time as well, so... Perfectly played farm by Inox. Look at that. So glorious. Oh, and he is. It looks like he's going for that Black Cleaver build on Jace yeah. as well. Some people have been opting for that. Uh-oh. Inox down to half. Gamsu still missing his ulti thanks to his top lane split push. The rest of enemy esports is around anyway. So no major gains here. Gamsu still working towards that Frozen Heart. No CDR yet for him, but the Triforce is long done. Yeah, I'm still waiting to pass judgment on this uh, Jace build. I've seen it a couple times, and it does give you a bit more flexibility with the champion um, and makes you a little bit less hesitant to use some of the melee abilities, but the pros of the pure damage Jace, especially after the rework, yeah. 
the 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 level six Q now that it goes up to level six is just insane to me. At this point in the game, when he's spiking hardest yeah. as well, uh, it would really mean that his poke is is even more uh, potent. But he gets enough to get the blue buff. So. Yeah, I mean, attack damage-wise, Cleaver is about the same. Binded up, stuns up with too. Healy Kid. A lot of damage coming through as Helios is still in the chase. Trashy walking forward, has not ulted yet. Dig the toss. There's a two-man stun, but enemy just ro running away. But Gamsu can disrupt it here. He goes in, looks for Trashy, nearly knocks him down. A big knockout from Helios means it's going to be a kill. Two for one in favor of Team Dignitas. In goes Kiwi Kid, lands some roots, lands some damage. A great zap into the rocket, but here's the chase in. Shift, they're going to go for Inox. Helios with the knockout is going to get the kill. Hands it over to Core JJ, and now out of the last one alive, a triple kill for the Sivir. It's a four for two in favor of Dignitas. All right, you get a little too close to the Sivir team base and uh, they just pop the ultimate, chase them down after the steal on the blue. Once again, it's another team fight for Dignitas where they pull a pincer movement, yeah. have Gamsu on the outside, corner them in. Kiwi Kid and Helios are able to lock up Body Drop and force this fight. And enemy don't go for the same target. Like, they could stun someone and burst him down, but... And that Rumble Ultimate, yeah, gets nobody. Like, right here, there... That was the Glacial Prison that could have been the turn. It could have been used, of course, on the Gamsu earlier on. Could have been used on the Nautilus when he first came in. Otherwise, what, great scrapping. I want to see why Trashy dies, too, because he could have run back home. He just dies to... Gamsu's Ignite, probably. He had the debuff on him. Ah, okay. Well, the cleanup there from Dig, very, very real after that sort of panic maneuver from Enemy. Yeah. It seems like concise teamfight calling is not a really good skill for Enemy Esports right now and Team Digitas doing a great job of picking that apart. Their patient gameplay has consistently put Dignitas farther and farther ahead. There's Dragon 3, still no really big risks taken by the team. And they do go for pay off. 5,000 gold lead now, 25 minutes in. Immaculate Dragon Control as well. Team Dignitas looking again at nearly making that first place spot. They definitely look well equipped to do it so far. Core JJ with those five kills on Sivir. Really looking to bring the pain. And Gamsu's teleport so far. And even when he hasn't had teleport, he's been able to get into a flanking position. So. This week as well, Gamsu not falling off, not failing. Yeah. Still only missed out on one killer assist this game. 90% feels so much better than 75, so I'm glad you got better this game, Gamsu. Careful. It's a heavy improvement. Not everyone will pick up on Sarni. That's okay, I don't mind. I'm looking out for you. Not everyone needs to be a fan. All right, well, they definitely have the ward coverage to do it here. Dig Toss, that's another thing. They've been so diligent with their ward placement. Uh, they did opt to go with the double yellow upgrades, as did enemy. Mm. Um, but it did come, I guess, Helios not opting for the uh, sight zone Rek'Sai, so it may be because of that. Oh, never mind, he did have it. So he, yeah, they even have the same build. They even have the double sight zone double yellow. Yeah. It makes you really rely on pinks because you only have two sweepers. Sometimes we see teams have up to four. We've even seen Gravity go with five. Yeah, and Gravity is even a team where they don't um, sometimes they fill up all their item slots and they don't even have space for the extras. Yeah, true. Or you can pull an impulse and have money and have room and just not buy wards at all. True enough. Shout outs to Jat. <laughs> well, let's see what they can make with this ridiculous coverage that they do have. Both sides of the jungle covered here. Ah, the vision denial half of the game. Mm -hmm. There's one more important one to get up behind red buff. I guess it's not that important to them. Yeah, Team Dignitas already flooding in, and there's only going to be out five seconds to go until that thing actually dies, so a limited window for enemies for it to go in. 2,500 health. Rocket there's the Nautilus to divide some time. Oh! Blue team has secured Baron Nasher. Huh. Helios spites early, but it's going to be fine. Kill goes on a body drop. Second half of the chase. Flares pops the Zonies, but where's the engage? Where's the team fight from enemy esports? They're nowhere to be seen. Two kills picked up, and the Baron for Team Dignitas. Well, Freak, it was all used in trying to steal the Baron. The flash over the wall for Annie a bit early. Didn't really combo it with a Jinx rocket timing. Maybe the rocket was too slow anyway. But regardless, that means Dignitas are going to run straight up the middle. They should be able to get inhibitor off this easily. There are lots more to gain than for Team Dignitas. There's still a base in their eyes. There's still champions on the field they could be killing. Azir to redirect it, but it looks like the recall. There's money in their pockets. Gamsu has teleport, though. So this could be a... 
Yeah, this could be a hell of a teleport pump there. So he's gonna gallop to the top lane. Digging has having to play a slower game. As soon as the respawns come through, they back off. They don't stay for the uh, inhibitor turret. Of course, they're, they know they're safe with their own turret behind them. And Dignitas will wait to fight another day. All right, well, they do have money in their pockets, obviously, after the fight and and the Barret. Again, just more slow play of saying, yeah, we could go for the inhib hard, but let's play the safer game of recall up, buy your items, get the waves pushed out. Just continuing to play the exact same way we expect Team Dignitas to do. All right, well, at this point, I'm looking for uh, Shifter to go deep into the team to make use of that zone is that he's completed. We've seen so many Azir plays today. It's uh, now his time to go deep. That's like totally not his style, by the way. Yeah, I know. He <laughs> would basically never do that. <laughs> and then watch in five seconds, he's going to go like solo kill three people under the turret like this. Inox nearly dead already. Right. I believe Ricochet and Shifter soldiers. Mid lane inhibitor turret goes down. Otter almost frontlining for the team. Inhibitor taking a lot of damage. Enemy esports not here to defend, really. Inox chunked out, has to heal first. Where's that AoE? Inox is going to come back from the fountain, and they might have to pull the trigger. If they don't do it then, yeah, inhibitor's gone. Time for the inhibitor to respawn. Kiwi Kid got rooted up. This might have been the window. Game to the front. There's Equalizer, but he uses it before the Glacial Prison. Stun lands only onto Helios. The fight comes in. Otter trying to cut away. Body drop goes down. Otter as well. Three kills, four kills picked up. Inox the last alive, and goodbye. A double kill for Shifter. At the end of the fight, 17 to 6. Minions in the base. Shifter, who did flash forward, by the way, into the fight. All right. <laughs> Dignitas going to be able to take this one, though. Well played. Looks clean, looks secured. 6 0 and 10 for Core JJ. 5 3 and 11 for Gamsu. Big score lines for these players, and that's going to be the game under 30 minutes. Team Dignitas and Saturday in first place. It's an impressive game. I think it's one of the cleanest, <laughs> most secured games we've seen this split. Makes sense that it's Dignitas, true to their style, good laning, better shot calling, even better team fighting. There's really never any risk of Dignitas looking out of this game. It just got better and better and better. Every five minutes, the lead grew. Another Dragon died, another Baron died, another team fight was won. Strong enemy, enemy never got to pull off. Any sort of combo, really. Yeah. On, on more than one person. Kiwi Kid in the top lane, mm -hmm. maybe that counts. Yeah, you're right. It was it was two elements to do it. One was Dignitas had a great job of flanking. Gamsu was never in the same spot as his teammates. And Korja and Shifter made sure they always were behind Helios and Kiwi Kid. So there was literally no chance for, I would say, a three-plus man Sejuani ulti. So that was point one, good job, Dignitas. Point two, though, is it honestly felt like enemy esports was uncoordinated. We saw multiple fights where Equalizer came first from Flares, then the stuns landed from everyone else. That's not the order it should go in. You stun the targets, you call your going for it so the cast animations all start at the same time, and you should be stunned on top of Equalizer. But without the stuns landing first, it just let Dignitas kite right away off the AoE, not suffer any damage, and just follow up afterwards with the Sifra ulti. Yeah. I mean, people sometimes forget about how much precision you need to have with even an AOE composition. Yeah. The timing has to be there. But overall, a very good game. And, and the fact that uh, enemy esports, despite the fact that I actually really did like their comp, it's a good AOE comp. And then on the backside of it, you can poke to make your opponents impatient. 